the dream. This is a strange story of a young wife who was so affectionately in love with her husband that even when he went on a journey, she could not for a moment forget about him. There was once a young couple, a carpenter and his wife, living very peacefully together in the mountainous part of the village of Haikui, facing the Japan Sea in the southern part of the province of Nota. One year, the carpenter, called Kichibe, got a job in the faraway city of Edo, present-day Tokyo, then the bustling seat of the military government in the eastern part of the country. If you get friendly with the women folk in Edo, I won't stand for it, the wife coyly warned her beloved husband. Coyly. Tell the truth, I don't know that word well myself. Nonsense. I'm going to Edo to work. Don't be silly, Kichibe said, lightly eluding her childish jealousy. So coyly is probably she jealously warned him. When he left the wife, when he left, the wife stood forlornly before their house until her husband finally disappeared over the mountain pass in the distance. There was no news of him for several months. But one day, a fellow carpenter suddenly returned to this village. The wife was elated. She went to him to see whether there was any news of her husband because there was a rumor circulating that Kichibe was living with a woman in Edo. Ah, Kichibe is a nice guy. Don't worry, don't worry. He's getting along all right, he said meaningfully with a sympathetic glance at the anxious wife. And how does he look, she asked timidly. Well, it's better you know nothing about that. If he's so fickle, why don't we become... He teased and grabbed her by the arm. The wife slipped away from him as if she were escaping from something unclean. And when the man approached her again, she spat in his face and there was a fierce hatred in her eyes. That night she could not sleep, thinking about her husband living so happily with the woman of Edo. It was well past midnight, but her thoughts were wandering in the, the vast emptiness of the dark night. It must have been when she heard the first cock of the early morning that she found herself wandering in a wide, open, grassy field. Then she saw something moving on a distant mound. When the moving object came near, she saw it was two foxes, a male and a female, romping around and frolicking with each other. Suddenly, she began to chase them, and in time she caught the male fox. She sat astride it and looked intently at it. The fox's face gradually changed into that of her husband. She was astounded, but she would not move. So, it was you after all, she whispered sharply, squeezing out every syllable with burning hatred from the bottom of her throat. The man hugged her tightly. His eyes were closed. Then he muttered a woman's name ever so fondly, a name the wife had never heard before. More hatred ran through her. Before long, she found her hands choking him with her long black hair firmly twisted around his neck. It was on the 11th day of the seventh month in the second year of Mewa, 1765, when the wife decided to go to Edo to see what might have happened to her husband after such a foreboding dream. It was when she came to the famous Zenkokuji nunnery in the province of Shinano that she saw a woman in traveling attire coming from the direction of Edo carrying an urn in the customary plain wooden box. Although she was walking with her head bent down as if in deep mourning, she appeared clean and neat. 
is beautiful. As they passed each other, the wife happened to look at the wooden box. To her surprise, she read the familiar characters, Kichibe, and a few other smaller words were written on the, on the box. Ah, she cried out. After they had made themselves known to each other, the woman from Edo confided, yes, this is Kichibe the carpenter. He died in writhing in agony during the early morning of the 11th day of July, as if he were being strangled and tortured by someone. I have decided to deliver his remains to you as my last duty to him. Now you can punish me as you wish, she said, repenting deeply. Two women then became nuns thinking that the coincidence of their meeting at the Zen Kokuji nunnery was the benevolent wish of the great Buddha. And then they went on a mendicant tour of the country to raise funds to make a bell in Kichibe's memory. The bell still tolls mercifully in the belfry of the Hozai-in temple in Shirase in Ishikawa Prefecture. Today it is known as the Demonist Bell by the local people. Let's see if we can find Ishikawa Prefecture. So we're looking for Shirase in Ishikawa Prefecture. Here's our map of Japan again. I found Ichikawa Prefecture. It's right in here. There it says Ishikawa. So, but I wasn't able to find Shirase anywhere there. So, so it's coming around up like this. It goes up like that. So this is still Ishikawa Prefecture up in here. But I didn't find any Shirase um, on there. So it could have been just a very small village that just didn't, uh, it doesn't show up on this map. 